Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lower Speeds live class. We're going to go ahead and get started with some common words to get our fingers warmed up. Here we go. Ready? Suggest, wonderful, white, experience, often, especially, assure, nearly, dance, ship, rate, claim, dated, forwarded, family, spring, live, copies, doctor, idea, particular, interesting, sample, land, hoping, start, proper, O, farther, head, word, church, requested, grade, feeling, hardly, items, ought, exactly, and exactly as X-A-L. All right, moving into some common phrases. You're going to phrase as much as possible. Here we go. Does he have? Do I have? Do you have? I can't have. I didn't have. I don't have. If you have, I have. It would have. May have. Shall have. Should have. So I have. So you have that have, that I have, that you have, their have, they have, to have, we have, what have, what I have, what you have, when have, when you have, where have, where I have, where you have whether I have, whether or not I have, whether or not you have, whether you have, which have, which I have, which you have, who have, will have, would have, you have, he believed, he believes, he could, he feels, he felt, he is, he recalled, he recalls, he recollected, he recollects. All right. I've got a number drill for you. And these are different sizes and numbers. Here we go. Ready? Size 18 by 24. Number J11, $12.80. Size 20 by 30. Number H93, $15.75. Size 66 by 104. Number L27, $5.30. Size 65 by 115. Number M38, $8.75. Size 24 by 36. Number K76, $18.40. Size 81 by 104. Number P71, $9.69. All right, so I have a basic brief review. This is going to cover every, which is E, effer, ever, which is final effer, before, initial B, final F, Mr. M, R on the initial side, uh, Mrs. M, R on the initial side, final S, Ms, initial M, final Z, 
um, there, possessive there, TH final R there. Let's go over there, THR on the initial side, and another AOT. All right, here are your sentences. Did you ever, and you can phrase that whole thing, invite Mr. and Mrs. Burton before this occasion? I saw their invitation was lying there on the table. Did you know they had moved? Should we send them another invitation before we hear about whether they received the first one? Ms. Thomas sends her regrets but hopes she will be able to attend at another time. It seems to happen every time there are this many people invited. They just don't get all their invitations. Does she wish to be called Ms. Rutherford? or Mrs. Rutherford. She used to use Ms. Clark before she was married. There is another thing to consider before informing the press. Will Mr. and Mrs. Duncan be there beforehand? Every item will have to be checked. Their baggage should be sent by another means. All right. Now we have some words that end with final effort. I'm going to give you the words before the sentences. Here we go. Fever, sliver, lever, over. Tougher, offer, sever, river, never, rougher, driver, favor, mover, chauffeur, suffer. And here are your sentences. You really should sever all ties. You should use a lever. When will the movers be here? It was cold enough to make us shiver. We got a good offer on the house. They had a limousine with a chauffeur for prom night. Please do me a favor and go over these figures. They will never uncover the secret. We need to clean up the river. He is taking a tougher position. I have a sliver in my thumb. It is safer to do it over and make sure. The rope was severed. All right. Now we have some sentences that build your vocabulary. Okay, here we go. He recognized the need for help. The shoes really hurt my feet. It is 40 miles to the beach by Route 20. Tell David to whisper the secret to me. I could hear him whispering. There are ice cubes in the refrigerator. Can you play the oboe? He went 10 miles 
to find help. That would be a real inconvenience. Do you like to hunt and fish? Plow up the field this summer. This book has a good plot. Tell David to whisper the secret to me. He held the line on prices for a long time. I could hear him whispering. There are ice cubes in the refrigerator. Pass me a ripe plum to eat. This book has a good plot. She wore a plume in her new hat. Why don't you buy her a nice house plant? The dish is made of plastic. He plans to go to school. Four plus two plus three is nine. The air is very cold today. Try for a quick win at the game. Let her wear your jacket to the store. Did you propose the new plan? Enter an order for 24 new compressors. I want a 60 horsepower motor. A carpenter uses a hammer and saw. Jimmy is going to be a carpenter. He has a nice head of hair. Have you ever eaten kale? Please press the shirt for me. Use a plane to shave the wood a bit. She sells real estate part-time. We have an open account here. The land of the Nile is fertile. Put on a good coating of wax. Biting your nails is a bad habit. Use the compass to tell where we are. The horses can pull the wagon. This water has been treated with chlorine. He sealed the crack with putty. They are seated on the terrace by the pool. Button the button on your shirt. Our town needs a good disposal system. Look at the crack in the plaster. Okay. Now, I've got part two of what we started yesterday. These are phrases that start with of the, along with a noun and then end with a period. Here we go. Of the pole, of the door, of the ship, of the zoo, of the sound, of the bird, of the nail, of the dock, of the rain, of the style, of the man, of the sand, of the spade, of the pile, of the mat, of the nest, 
of the fork, of the pants, of the tape, of the spark, of the road, of the wind, of the lip, of the cart, of the shark, of the jet, of the wick, of the year, of the cap, of the pipe, of the jack, of the vine, of the joke, of the house, of the vine, of the light, of the pot, of the car. All right. Now, I've got our last drills going to focus on working with words. Here we go. I've got a word, and then I'll give you a phrase along with a sentence. Here we go. Exclude. Exclude all that. Exclude him from the conversation. Oppressive. Oppressive heat. It was so humid that it was oppressive. Numerical, numerical order. They found the list was in numerical order. Irrational, irrational conclusion. They were acting in an irrational manner. Sentence, long sentence. She wrote the entire sentence correctly. Emphasis, strong emphasis. Put your emphasis on accuracy. Reluctant, very reluctant. He was reluctant to take the stand. Improvement, real improvement. His performance showed improvement. Infiltrate, he infiltrated it. The spies will infiltrate the organization. Vegetarian, vegetarian diet. He became a vegetarian three years ago. Cylindrical, cylindrical wheel. The shape of the object was cylindrical. Uranium, uranium deposit. They delivered the uranium to the lab. Occipital, occipital bone. The problem was in the occipital area. Distinction, obvious distinction. The distinction was clear. Demand, very demanding. The kidnapper made many demands. Inventory, take inventory. The store closed for inventory. Contemplated, serious contemplation. He had contemplated the possibility. Subsidy, the subsidy. The subsidy was substantial. Item, the item. The sale item caught her attention. Coherent, spoke incoherently. After the accident, Jim was not coherent. Criteria, new criteria. The criteria for grading were changed. Designate, is designating. 
are you the designated driver tonight? Okay. Now, I have a paragraph for you. I'm going to read this one time at 60, again at 80, the last time at 100. This is a witness's answer. Okay. All right. Here we go. I hit the ground. Then I went to stand up, but it felt as if somebody had stuck a knife in my back. I wanted to get away from the truck because it looked as if it was going to teeter and perhaps roll over again. It was sitting on its side and it was kind of moving. It looked as if it was going to come over on me. So I walked away a little bit. Then I just sat down and that is where I stayed. I just sat there looking up at the bed of the truck and waited to be taken away. It wasn't too long until somebody got there. All right, so the next, the next tape will be at 80. Here we go. I hit the ground. Then I went to stand up, but it felt as if somebody had stuck a knife in my back. I wanted to get away from the truck because it looked as if it was going to teeter and perhaps roll over again. It was sitting on its side and it was kind of moving. It looked as if it was going to come over on me. So I walked away a little bit. Then I just sat down and that is where I stayed. I just sat there looking up at the bed of the truck and waited to be taken away. It wasn't too long until somebody got there. All right, last tape will be at 100. Here we go. I hit the ground. Then I went to stand up, but it felt as if somebody had stuck a knife in my back. I wanted to get away from the truck because it looked as if it was going to teeter and perhaps roll over again. It was sitting on its side and it was kind of moving. It looked as if 
it was going to come over on me. So I walked away a little bit. Then I just sat down and that is where I stayed. I just sat there looking up at the bed of the truck and waited to be taken away. It wasn't too long until somebody got there. All right. Yeah, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday from this sheriff's report that was given in court. And um, I'm going to start this at 60 and work my way up to 100, okay? All right, here we go. AHP's Air 83 helicopter put information out over the radio that one subject tried to jump the fence in the next house over and another subject fled the location and is hunkered down three lots south of the original residence behind property an area check of the immediate surrounding area and residences was conducted. One of the two subjects that fled was detained and later identified as Eric Lammers. The subject that fled and is or was outstanding was later identified as Larry Martinez. Officer safety information was put out that Larry Martinez was armed with a chrome handgun. During the area check, a Green Eagles football jersey that matched the shirt description Lammers was wearing and confirmed by Deputy Smith was located in the backyard of a nearby residence on Herald Street in the city of Phoenix. The green football jersey is suspected to be Lammers. When Lammers was detained in the back seat of a sheriff's patrol marked unit, he saw me holding the green football jersey and asked if he can have it back. A Green Eagles football jersey bearing the name Davis and the number 18 was placed in a brown evidence paper bag sealed with evidence tape initialed and assigned evidence tag number 102-9802-865. The football jersey was placed in an evidence locker at the Sheriff's Phoenix Station. At 4-1-2014, at approximately 1534 hours, I was self-assigned to assist our detectives at Stevens Self Storage, located at 24501 Yates Street in the city of 
Phoenix. The information received was unknown subjects in a black Ford Mustang were at Stevens self storage. Two subjects left the black Ford Mustang and went into storage unit number 972, which is under the name of Larry Martinez. Storage unit number 972 was later found to have stolen property. Reference number 39120830302 on 4-1-2014 i conducted a felony traffic stop on the black ford mustang at the south entrance of stevens self storage a white male adult later identified as Raymond Bennett and a white female adult, later identified as Dennis Wood, were detained. Both were patted down for weapons and placed in the back seat of sheriff's patrol vehicles. The two white male adults later identified as Matthew Myers and Brian Brunn, fled Stevens Self Storage on foot and were later apprehended by sheriff's deputies. On 4-1-2014, I transported Wood and Brunn to the Phoenix Sheriff's Station. All right, we'll stop there. And we will move into jury charge. The subject here is criminal. You're going to hear ladies and gentlemen, which is L long AJ, existence, evidence, EFD, direct evidence, um, non-existence, circumstantial evidence, inference, logically, acceptable, combination, rational conclusion, reconciled, established, which is blish, B-L-I-S-H, um, circumstance, which is S-I-R-K, Beyond a reasonable doubt, either Y-A-R-D or just Y-R-D. In other words, N-E-R-D-Z or N-R-D-Z, leaving out the E. Um, let's see. I'll give you acceptable. All right, so I'm gonna start this at 60 and work my way to 100, okay? All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, evidence consists of testimony of witnesses, writings, material objects, or anything presented to the senses and offered to prove the existence or non-existence of a fact. Evidence is either direct or circumstantial. Direct evidence is evidence that directly proves a fact without the necessity of an inference and which by itself, if found to be true, establishes that fact. Circumstantial evidence is evidence that if found to be true, 
proves a fact from which an inference of the existence of another fact may be drawn. An inference is a deduction of fact that may logically and reasonably be drawn from another fact or group of facts established by the evidence. It is not necessary that facts be proved by direct evidence. They may be proved also by circumstantial evidence or by combination of direct evidence and circumstantial evidence. Both direct evidence and circumstantial evidence are acceptable as a means of proof. Neither is entitled to any greater weight than the other. However, a finding of guilt as to any crime may be based on circumstantial evidence unless the proved circumstances are not only one but consistent with the theory that the defendant is guilty of the crime but two cannot be reconciled with any other rational conclusion. Further, each fact which is essential to complete a set of circumstances necessary to establish the guilt of the defendant must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. In other words, before an inference essential to establish guilt may be found to have been proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Each fact or circumstance upon which inference necessarily rests must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. Moving into Q&A, let me give you a word list. This is going to be plaintiff questioning. You're going to hear whiskey, premises, pocket, pool hall, drink, half a pint, beer, card room, uh, that you were, you can phrase that whole thing, T-H-A-U-R-P, uh, club. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. And again, this is just strictly plaintiff questioning. Okay. All right, here we go. And I'm going to read this one time at 60, again at 80, and again at 100, okay? Here we go. Did this friend of yours go over to the club? Yes, sir. From 7.30, when you got there, did you stay there? all the time until this occurred? Yes. What were you doing most of that time that you were at this club? Playing cards. As I understand it, they have a bar and an eating place in front 
and then this card room behind. Is that the way it was? A card room and pool hall. In other words, the place where they played pool and the card room was all in one big room. Was it? Yes. Did they, at that time, serve anything to drink there on the premises? Beer is all. Did you take anything to drink onto the premises with you? Yes, I did. What did you have with you when you went over there? Well, I had bought a half a pint of whiskey and three of us took a drink out of it. Was any left? What was left was in my inside pocket. How much had you had to drink that day before this happened? That is all I had had because I was at home all day and I hadn't had another drop. Had you eaten before you left home? Yes, sir. What time did you leave your house? I guess it must have been 645 or so because I had to pick up my friend. All right, so let's do that again at 80. Here we go. Did this friend of yours go over to the club? Yes, sir. From 7.30, when you got there, did you stay there all the time until this occurred? Yes. What were you doing most of that time that you were at this club? Playing cards. As I understand it, they have a bar and an eating place in front and then this card room behind. Is that the way it was? A card room and pool hall. In other words, the place where they played pool and the card room was all in one big room. Was it? Yes. Did they at that time serve anything to drink there on the premises. Beer is all. Did you take anything to drink onto the premises with you? Yes, I did. What did you have with you when you went over there? 
Well, I had bought a half a pint of whiskey and three of us took a drink out of it. Was any left? What was left was in my inside pocket. How much had you had to drink that day before this happened? That is all I had had because I was at home all day and I hadn't had another drop. Had you eaten before you left home? Yes, sir. What time did you leave your house? I guess it must have been 6.45 or so because I had to pick up my friend. All right, last time at 100, here we go. Did this friend of yours go over to the club? Yes, sir. From 730 when you got there, did you stay there all the time until this occurred? Yes. What were you doing most of that time that you were at this club? playing cards. As I understand it, they have a bar and an eating place in front and then this card room behind. Is that the way it was? A card room and pool hall. In other words, the place where they played pool and the card room was all in one big room, was it? Yes. Did they, at that time, serve anything to drink there on the premises? Beer is all. Did you take anything to drink onto the premises with you? Yes, I did. What did you have with you when you went over there? Well, I had bought a half a pint of whiskey and three of us took a drink out of it. Was any left? What was left was in my inside pocket. How much had you had to drink that day before this happened. That is all I had had because I was at home all day and I hadn't had another drop. Had you eaten before you left home? Yes, sir. What time did you leave your house? I guess it must have been 6.45 or so, because I had to pick up my friend. All right, so we only have a few minutes left. Let's see, we, yeah, we've got about nine minutes left. So I'm going to read a Q&A transcript that is uh, from court, and uh, plaintiff is questioning, but uh, defense does come in as well as the court. So I'm gonna start this at, uh, I'll start this at 80 and work my way to 100, okay? Did Mr. Rundell provide you with an estimate of the part itself? Yes, verbally, yes. What did he tell you that the value was? Approximately $2,500. Now, did Mr. Rundell have a chance to see the driver of that vehicle? 
The white flatbed truck. Yes. Did Mr. Rundell identify the driver of that vehicle to you? Yes. And you made contact with the driver of that vehicle? Yes. And during the course of your investigation, did you identify the driver of that vehicle by name? Yes. What was his name? That was Mr. Miller. Do you know the first name? James. Now, can you see James Miller in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you tell us where James Miller is sitting and what he's wearing? Seated next to counsel with the red tie and the Mr. Miller is wearing a blue polo shirt with black stripes. Okay, Your Honor, may the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant. Any objection, counsel? No, no, Your Honor. Okay, it will be so noted in the record. Now, during the course of your investigation, were you able to obtain Mr. Miller's residence? Yes. What was the address of his residence? 8550 Sandbar in the city of Phelan. That's the residence which the drag marks had led to? Yes. Okay. Now, did he identify anyone else inside the white flatbed truck? Yes. Who did he identify? Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson was a passenger in the vehicle. Yes. You made contact with Mr. Wilson? Yes. Do you know the first name of Mr. Wilson? I don't recall. Would it refresh your recollection to refer to your report? Yes. Your Honor, may the witness refer to his report? Sure, go ahead. That would be Alan Wilson. Do you see Alan Wilson in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you tell us where Alan Wilson is sitting and what he's wearing? Yes, he's seated at the end of the council table with a tan long sleeve shirt. May the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant, Alan Wilson. Mr. Smith, any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay, it will reflect. Now, during the course of your investigation, did you have an opportunity to interview James Miller? Yes. Did you read James Miller his Miranda rights prior to speaking with him? Yes. Did James Miller indicate that he understood his rights and was willing to speak with you? Yes. Did James Miller tell you that the white flatbed truck that was holding the cut up pieces belonged to him? Yes. And what did James Miller tell you about the cut up pole pieces that were found on the truck? He said that he cut up the pole 
and put it on his truck. Did he tell you where he found this pole? Yes. Where did he find this pole? Near Oasis Road in the city of Phelan. Did he tell you specifically where on Oasis Road? In a dry wash. Did he tell you what he did? How he went about taking the pole out of the wash? He said he dragged it with the same white flatbed truck. Did he tell you where he dragged it to? To his house. Did he tell you what he did with the pole after he dragged it to his house? Yes. What did he do with it? He cut it up with a torch. Did Mr. Miller tell you if anyone helped him in dragging the pole and cutting it up? Yes. Who did he tell you helped him? That would be Alan Wilson. Did Mr. Miller tell you what he was going to do with the cut up pole? Yes. What was he going to do with it? Take it to a metal recycler to recycle it for cash. Did Mr. Miller tell you if he thought the pole belonged to anybody? Yes. Who did he tell you the pole belonged to? Edison. He thought it belonged to Edison. What do you mean by Edison? Southern California, Edison. Now, did Mr. Miller tell you he had permission to remove or take that pole from Southern California, Edison? Yes, he told me. What did he tell you? He told me no, he did not. All right, that concludes our Lower Speeds Live class. Have a wonderful day.